everybody, Andy Sachs here with Coldwell Banker, the Around Town team, most importantly for our Around Town podcast, and I'm joined by State Assemblyman Sean Scanlon. Sean, it's a pleasure, man. Thank Good morning. You. Thank you for joining us. I know you are incredibly busy. Happy to be here. I, thanks, man. And, and uh, it took us a couple months to find a date that worked for you, and we're going to get you out of here in due time. But right now, we're going to put you on the hot seat. We're going to jump right in. Let's go. Sean, you head the committee for real estate in the assembly for the state of Connecticut. And uh, nothing more apropos than joining us here to talk about real estate. Yeah. There are so many great benefits to this state, and, and there's a, gr- a lot of great reasons to live here. We're getting, you know, we're taking our fair share of knocks these days in Connecticut, but there's still a lot of great reasons to be here. And I want to talk about the good. I want to talk about our challenges also. Sure. But give me kind of a state of the union on where we stand in real estate in Connecticut from the government side, if you could. So Connecticut, uh, first of all, great to be here with you. Um, Connecticut is a great place. I mean, I grew up here. We're taping this in Guilford. I grew up in this town. I went away to college and spent some time in Manhattan, but I came back here because I wanted to raise my family here. And I think a lot of my friends that grew up in Connecticut, specifically towns like Guilford, they want to come back here because it's a great place to raise a family. Um, But they are having trouble coming back here because of a couple of different reasons. And Connecticut's economy really has stalled in the last couple of years since the recession. And so we have this sort of weird thing going on where we're a desirable place to live for so many different reasons, but there are things that hold us back from growing to our full potential and meeting the full potential of Connecticut. And that's what my colleagues and I are really focused on every single day, despite some of the challenges that we'll talk about. Sure. Um, so I think from a 30,000 foot perspective, look, last year um, we had 3.2% growth in the market here in Connecticut, um, which is good. Um, yeah, that, you're, you're defining growth as far as values of homes yeah, or the, transactions? The, the, median, the median home sale price. Okay. Um, was 3.2% better than the year before. That was a five-year high, but that is still nowhere near where we were in 2007, 2008, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Or or from national trends also from from healthier economies. Correct. And so what we're seeing right now is a problem that we have with our budget, um, where we have a persistent deficit because of some really stupid financial decisions that were made by people from both parties. Um, And so we have persistent growing debt that's outpacing the growth of the government and taxpayers. What we're seeing is a problem of the fact that we can't tax or or spend our way out of it. We have to grow our way out of this budget problem for the next 10 years to ride this out. And the best way that we can do that is to change the conditions on the ground and make Connecticut a little more attractive. And home sales is a big part of that. Now you say grow our way out of it. And I love that type of talk. But what about the other end? There's growth, but there's also cuts. Yeah. So what's happened is, you know, I've been in the assembly for four years. Uh, in my first year, there was a tax increase proposed by the governor, uh, Governor Malloy at the time. That was the second biggest in the in the state history. I actually was one of 11 Democrats to vote against that tax cut, which was not easy or fun. But sure. that's another podcast. You got to make hard decisions. Yeah, you have to make hard decisions. Um, but the budget, even though despite he had a $1.5 billion tax increase, the budget a year later was still out of balance. So in the next budget cycle, we actually passed a bipartisan budget for the first time in 10 years that relied mostly on cuts. Well, guess what? We are right back into deficit now after having cut instead of just taxed. So nothing that we're doing is working because there is no way you can outpace the rapidity of the growth of the unfunded liabilities. So basically, we can't cut enough because of the liabilities of which we're committed to. 80% of the state budget is spent on four items. And so, and a lot of those four things are either impossible or very difficult to cut. So those four items would be what? Pen- uh, pensions? It's pensions, debt, uh, the state liability, uh, like the state workforce that yeah. we do every day, um, and then municipal aid to schools and Medicaid. So it's the four, is the, is the state employees, yeah. the debt, Medicaid, and town aid, which is what we do for schools and, yeah. and paying for local roads. For various reasons, those are very difficult to cut. So we are only stuck able to cut in that 20%, and that 20% just gets whacked and whacked right. and whacked. And that 20% far exceeds the, the liabilities of which we have. Totally. Um, and so I go back to growth, because growth is the only way that we can ride this storm out and not burden the taxpayers with more tax increases or burden our taxpayers and our neighbors with devastating cuts that come to human services, people with special needs, people who need help with drug addiction. And so... I go back to trying to make Connecticut the most attractive place that it can be so that friends of mine who grew up in towns like Guilford and have maybe gone to Manhattan or Chicago or LA want to come back here and know that when they do, there's great opportunity for them in jobs, 
in housing, um, in a great quality of life. Yeah. And that's what we have to focus on. Yeah, we're, and we're going to do with our, ne- our next podcast. You and I are going to talk about a little bit where can Connecticut go. Great. But let's dig a little bit deeper into the weeds and in some of these challenges. Sure. You know, if I, I tell my clients and I tell my, uh, the folks who work with me all the time, I say, thank God we still have good schools for the most part, right? Because that's still why people come here. Sure. Right? It's a beautiful place to live. You raise a family and get a solid education and then figure out where you're going to go after. But people are leaving the state at a pretty alarming rate also. So how do we make it more attractive for people to not only come here to raise a family, but to spend their life here? Yeah, so I mean, I am going to be the biggest ambassador for this part of Connecticut. Uh, you know, I love this part of Connecticut. Hey, th- th- this, this, this is your constituency. This is my I, constituency. I, I'm, in, I'm in your neck of the woods here. We'll bring you down to Newtown and Northern Fairfield County another time, maybe. But right now, I'm up here, so please. And my wife grew up in Southbury, so I'm okay. familiar All with right. that. I'm familiar with that part of the state too, and that's a great place. But um, the Greater New Haven area, I think, is has got the greatest potential in the state of Connecticut. Um, we have Yale. We have such a driver of not just commerce, but education. There's so much happening there. The health system is incredibly phenomenal. They're doing great work every day at Yale. Um, and because of that, um, you can see a boomlet. And it's already happening in a place like Guilford and Brantford. We have a biotech boom going on at a time when there really isn't that much growth happening in the overall economy. The right. biotech industry in Connecticut is booming and it's happening right here. And when I meet with these folks and I ask them what we can do, it's not the things that you would necessarily assume, right? It's not taxes, it's not necessarily regulations, it's trying to improve the overall culture of Connecticut. And one of the best ways that I hear all the time that we can do that is by improving our transportation infrastructure. I wanna wanna get into that in our next podcast, but let's go back and talk about culture of Connecticut a little bit. It went, and I'm, I'm not a Connecticut guy, born and raised like you, I'm from north of Philadelphia, and I got here about 15 or 16 years ago, and it's, it's home. I, I love this place, and I love the potential that it's had, but I'm getting tired of loving just the potential that Connecticut has, because yeah. all I've heard since I've been here is, man, when I moved here, and I'm talking to folks been here for 40 years, there was no income tax. Mm-hmm. Now there's income tax. You know, Property taxes were low. Now yeah. property taxes are relatively high, and this and this and all these other things. How do you change a culture that for the past generation has just been on this downward slope. And maybe there's not an answer today, and I'm not looking even for something that you guys might be working in, in government to do, but just in general, from a from maybe from a resident and a lifelong Connecticut resident yeah. yourself, how do we change that culture? So I think it's marketing. I mean, and you know a lot about this from your business. Um, messaging works, and messaging can make a big difference on people. I mean, I always think back to FDR, right? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself, right? Um, so maybe some fireside chats, maybe. And, yeah, you know, yeah. but but it's. I think you know, CBIA is the main lobbying organization for the business industry. And in CBIA Canada. stands for. Connecticut Business and Industry Association. Um, And so, you know, they are usually on the more right wing side of things, but I have been endorsed by them in my campaigns and I appreciate their support. I think what they realized was a couple of years that their incessant messaging saying that things were so bad and the sky was falling in Connecticut was having the exact opposite effect of what they wanted to do, right? They were trying to get policymakers to change their policies, but at the same time, they were it was pushing away business. They were pushing, pushing away, away business and they were creating this culture of everything is, is bad in Connecticut. But is this something that that organization has said, you know, hey, we got to reverse course now? Yes. And now they're focused on the positive side of Connecticut and how can we positively grow this? And I think that that is a really welcome change. And I think all of us need to do a better job of being better ambassadors for selling Connecticut, right? If all we do is say that Connecticut sucks all the time, we are not going to ever turn around Connecticut and Absolutely. get Connecticut going in a better direction. And so... I try to do as many things as possible on a bipartisan basis. I think it's really important. And the fact that I just referenced a couple minutes ago, we passed a bipartisan budget, that sent a strong message to people in Connecticut that we were rolling up our sleeves, we were putting aside politics, and we were doing the right thing for the people of Connecticut. And, I want to, and that's what we got to keep doing. I agree wholeheartedly. I want to point out also, guys, that I just met Sean um, outside this room about 15 minutes ago. I did some research on you before. And you really, you really are a pretty bipartisan approach to politics here in Connecticut. So sometimes you're thinking, Andy, you're sitting here with a politician. He's going to tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you, you know, what's going to make him look good in front of his constituency. But I got to tell you, his track record shows that you are willing to go and make the hard decisions that might not be popular up front, but better for not only your constituency and the market you serve, but also for Connecticut as a whole. Yeah, and I think that if we do more of that... I'm not a paid sponsor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it, if we do more of that, I think that we can really show people that we are doing the right thing. And I think that the more that we can do that and send that message to people, I think it gives confidence to business people that are already here and maybe to people outside. Hey, look, Connecticut's got some challenges, but they are working on it. They're rolling up their sleeves and they're trying to address the problems. And be, because be, be of a that, part of that change. Be a part of that change. Yeah, absolutely be a part of that change. Um, 
the door is always open. My door is always open. I try to be the most responsive legislator in the state. It's a competition I play with myself and it drives my wife crazy because I'm trying to, I get my emails on my phone. I'm constantly trying to, to get back to people. You'd make a good realtor then. I would. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but for me, it's about showing that people are listening. And that's the biggest part, whether it's in real estate, when you're a doctor or a lawyer, listening is what your client or your customer wants to hear. Government should be no different. Absolutely. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you guys are elected to serve the people, yeah. and to make the people's lives better. And you guys have a monumental challenge right now in front of you. And I think it's a generational shift that's going to have to happen. It's like turning the Queen Mary. I mean, I think everyone wants results now. But in reality, you know, you and I hopefully are sitting here in 30 years and saying, wow, we're back. Yeah. Because that's how long it's going to take. It's going to take, you know, you, I think hopefully in the next decade you see, wow, we're on our way. Yes. And then at two decades, it's like, whoa, you know, we're a powerhouse. And then, you know, 30 years from now, it's like, you know, hey, Connecticut's a place to be. Yes. But that's how long it's going to take. It can't happen overnight. It's got to, you know, a lot of stabilization has to happen. Um, listen, you've got a ton of challenges ahead of you. I appreciate you coming on and talking to us. It was a pleasure. Good to be here. And uh, we're, we're going to do it again real soon, actually, in about five minutes. We're going to turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, I'm Andy Sachs with Coldwell Banker. This is Assemblyman Sean Scanlon. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.